Having covered the coalition operators up to season 6, it's time to look into the operator lore for the Allegiance. The Allegiance, being one part of the coin that is Armistice, is a multinational alliance between Middle Eastern forces, Russian militaries and private military companies. In total, including the Milsim operators, the Allegiance contains 26 operators. They are made up of the remnants of the Russian forces in Uzbekistan, foreign mercenaries, rogue NATO soldiers and the Uzbekistan Special Service Group. However, since I've already covered the base and season 1 operators, and I'm excluding the male sim operators, I'm covering the operators that have been added from season 2 up until season 6. In today's briefing, I will dive deep into the lore of 7 allegiance operators. Mace, Iskra, Roslin, Roslin Rose Helms, Marcus Lurch Ortega, Velikan, Nikolai and Farah Ahmed Karim. Mace is an ex-United States Ranger that turned a gun for hire after protesting combat orders he deemed illegal. It's known and confirmed by the developers of Infinity Ward, Mace used to serve with Simon Ghost Riley, which explains the similarity in the choice of facial apparel. Where and when they serve together is unknown though. It's also unknown if there are others who have taken up the identity of the Ghost and whether they are part of a larger organization. Mace joined jackals, cutting his teeth in Soweto, South Africa. He marked his body with traditional crocodile scars, supposedly to mark each one of his kills. Through this brutal style, he has earned a reputation for being a vicious operator. The private military company logo that is featured on his tombstone skin resembles that of Shadow Company, although he isn't officially a member. Born to an Urzikstani mother and Russian father during Barkov's occupation, Iskra was raised among the Urzikstani Liberation Force or ULF. In Farah's army she worked as a Russian fluent scout and saboteur in many operations until she was cut off outside Urzikstan after the events at Tariq al marat or the Highway of Death. She joined Chimera and under Nikolai's leadership went on to fight against Alcatala. In this time she got acquainted with Mara from the Warcom division of the coalition as indicated by these voice lines. You haven't changed, still heartless as ever. My heart is safe at home. Just like old times, Heva. Rosalind Rose Helms grew up as a hunter and tracker from the Colorado mountains alongside her dog Snafu. After severing ties with the United States Army Rangers, Rose returned to support her family and her ailing father. She was periodically in contact with Mace, who, as we know, left the army after abandoning his post, and Mace helped Rose gain entry in Zane's mercenary group, the Jackals. However, not long after, she returned to her United States roots and joined Shadow Company, still remaining on cordial terms with Mace. When the Allegiance intercepted comms traffic attributed to Viktor Zakhaev coming from the Ferdansk Stadium, Lurch and a small crew of Shadow Company operatives arrived in Ferdansk as Rose was rigging the stadium roof. Once the roof was blown off, the team landed inside the stadium to hand down Zakhaev. Despite their efforts, Shadow Company was unable to locate Zakhaev as it was discovered by Task Force 1 for 1 operatives that he had escaped undetected via the underground metro system. Nonetheless, Shadow Company operatives remained in Verdansk to continue the fight against Alcatala. Born in Plano, Texas, Marcus Lurch Ortega was somewhat of a loner growing up and as a teen possessed natural size and strength. Those attributes led him to the gridiron where he was dominant on the field and prone to causing injuries to others. Disinterested in college or a 9-to-5 job, Lurch jumped at the opportunity to join the United States Marine Corps and boot camp was everything he hoped for. After joining the 2nd Marine Special Operations Battalion, Lurch thrived on the battlefield and his enjoyment of the fight wasn't lost on his squad mates. Everyone noted it was better to have Lurch fighting beside them than against them. After an unfortunate mishap with the use of excessive force and insurgents, Lurch was honorably discharged, though some of his more questionable choices made this a borderline case. 
Civilian life didn't particularly appeal to him and it, was, and it wasn't long until he was approached by an international private security firm, the Shadow Company. After its CEO came across Lurch Touche where they saw him as the perfect combination of skill and moral flexibility. Lurch quickly became senior officer at the firm. Shadow Company is called in to clean up the uncleanable messes and take out the targets other outfits can't touch. Where a magnet for missions too sensitive to ever get declassified and too messy for those who don't know when to bend the rules of engagement. To put it bluntly, they get the job done. The black rook chess piece prominently featured on the Shadow Company's logo is described by Lurch to be symbolic of Shadow Company's brute force to operate in its own unique way, much like the rook in chess. Never one to turn down any contract, Lurch is known as a cold-hearted operator who is a one-force multiplier. He thrives in the private sector where he can work under his own terms and loosely considers himself and his crew only by name members of the Allegiance. After the fall of Armistice, the Shadow Company joined the fight, taking place in Verdansk. Falcon is a shadow of a shadow. Tales of his exploits are written off as fairy tales at best and gross exaggerations at worst. Those who know him never speak ill of him. Whether it's due to fear or respect, no one knows. Next to nothing is known about Velikan save for his mysterious identity and reputation as a highly trained assassin. At some point he joined Shadow Company as a mercenary. His name means giant in Russian and other Slavic languages, hinting towards him having a Russian background. He doesn't have any voice lines, so it's impossible to confirm. The only instance of his voice being heard is during a finishing move, where his default quip is him menacingly laughing in a muffled tone. Nikolai, real name unknown, code name Sigin6, is a Russian patriot whose love of his country is only matched by his love of weaponry. Nikolai is a fixer who can acquire anything, anywhere. Despite his murky background, when it counts most, he'll always choose right over wrong. He is a longtime friend of Captain Price and leader of the Chimera private military company. Chimera being a sub-faction of the Allegiance is a private military company that seems to hire former military operators from multiple countries as well as dirty soldiers having problems with the law and former gangsters. Operators included are Nikolai himself, Jaeger Novak, Sebastian Kruger, Sid and Iskra. The first time we encounter him is in St. Petersburg. Nikolai assisted Price and Garrick in capturing Jamal the Butcher Rahar and Nikolai provided them weapons for the unsanctioned operation. Price and Garrick chased after Rahar. As Rahar was getting away, Nikolai hit him with a black van and drags him into the van. Later, Nikolai kidnaps Rahar's wife and son for the interrogation. Nikolai has also displayed a hate for Roman Barkov on many occasions. Not long after, on November 3rd, 2019, Nikolai takes part in the attack on Barkov's chemical factory, providing Alex, Farah and the team explosive charges for the demolition. After Barkov's death on a helicopter, Nikolai was, was also in the same helicopter tells far that Mother Russia would approve. In the sixth season, after March 2020, thanks to Price's intel, Nikolai and Farah are sent to this metro subway system in Verdansk after discovering that Viktor Zakhaev and his men have been moving and smuggling weapons using the subway discreetly. As Nikolai worked on turning on the train, Farah eliminated a group of Zakhaev soldiers approaching Nikolai's position. After getting the power back online, Nikolai and Farah used one of the trains to make their way through Verdansk, notified Price and continued to search for Zakhaev. Farah Ahmed Karim is an exceptional soldier who has known a lifetime of war. She is the founding member and commander of the Uzbekistani Liberation Force since 2010. Her combat capabilities and fieldcraft have been further honed by tier 1 level training with the SAS. She is renowned not only for leading the resistance against enemy troops, but for establishing protective units to combat terror groups throughout Uzbekistan. Under Farah's leadership, civilian militias play a critical role in the fight to return their subjugated population to sovereignty. Her forces compromise male and female volunteer fighters with a maximum age limit. Farah does not allow those under the age of 15 to take part in frontline fighting, but anyone and everyone is invited to undergo military training and join her reserves. To protect her people from owing a debt to the world, Farah accepts only select funding and equipment from the international community 
preferring to keep her forces reliant on their own for material support. Raising her army with little more than commandeered weapons and unofficial support from the SES legendary Bravo Squadron, Farah says Will is the most powerful weapon. As a girl in the opening salvos of the invasion, she and her brother were caught spending their teens held as POWs by General Barkov's rogue forces, where captives were subjected to forced labor, routinely witnessing acts of chemical experimentation on fellow prisoners. In 2009, Farah led an escape fighting alongside a Western aid unit. She vowed then to give her life to freeing her country from subjugation and chaos. Farah Karim's modern beliefs have had a far-reaching effect, and occupying soldiers often directly hunt and target her. Labeled a terrorist organization by the Russian government for their long-standing resistance, Russian soldiers are ordered to make no distinction between the terror group al qatala and liberation fighters under Farah's command. AQ terrorists pursue Farah and the ULF with a mandate to kill. Farah's worldview draws a sharp line of demarcation between herself and the enemy. The enemy has come where they are not welcomed and taken what is not theirs. Farah refuses to stage counter-offensives or launch attacks beyond the borders of her country, believing with all her heart that what distinguishes her from the terrorists and the occupiers is never crossing the line from defender to aggressor. We are a protective force, we are rescuers, not killers. After her involvement in the war against al qatala on November 3rd, she, alongside Captain Price Gas Alex and her Urzikstani Liberation Force, launched an unofficial assault on Barkov's chemical factory. Successfully destroying the factory, she also managed to eliminate Barkov in the process. Although surprisingly part of Chimera rather than ULF, her being part of Nikolai's PMC makes sense. To prevent her involvement in the war on al qatala to affect the ULF and her country Urzikstan, she joined up with Nikolai. Five months after the destruction of Barkov's factory, she joined Nikolai in Verdansk in the hunt for Zakaya. Thank you guys very much for watching. The creation of these videos is very time consuming from writing the script to designing the motion graphics. So if you like these types of videos and want to support me in continuing creating, there are several things you can do. Liking or disliking, depending on what you thought of a video. Other than views, this shows me how much you like the content I put out. Subscribing reinforces your support and shows me you want more videos. Leaving interactive comments or feedback reminds me how I'm not just doing it for myself and shows how I can improve. And the last way to support me is to join the channel and become a member for one, five or ten dollars. In return you will unlock exclusive rewards such as digital lore items and exclusive posts or perhaps unique ideas you can implement. The more support I gain, the more time and energy I can invest in YouTube and in turn this will result in more frequent uploads and higher quality content. Whatever you decide to do, I'll be here because I like what I do. Thanks again for watching, peace out.